Guys, his family's painting business did 2.7 million bucks in revenue, but he said, guys, I want to go after a nine-figure deal. Let's make this a marketplace for any home services, car detailing, painting, you name it, cleaning, they'll do it. He put together a $97 Grand Slam offer for folks in Vancouver to use his app to get nine, their whole condo clean for 97 bucks. 200 people took advantage of that in Q1 so far this year in 2023. He's hoping to do 5,000 jobs completed this year, and those jobs get completed by over 1,500 contractors who ideally start making a living on his app, staybusy.ca. Hey folks, my guest today is Carter Olive. He helps homeowners get things done quickly by easily hiring contractors for jobs around the house. He's a two times founder and a golf addict. Carter, are you ready to take us to the top? <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man. All right, man. Is, is Tiger ever going to be back to his, his old form or no? Is that guy gone forever? <laughs> I saw him limping into the Genesis Invitational this week. So I'm hoping he can scrape out one last win, but we'll see. I mean, he's got the passion, right? Yep. Yep. We'll, we'll see what happens. All right. So talk to me about the business. How did you get into this space? Were you doing a bunch of manual work yourself or your family's in the business or how'd you, how'd you come across it? Yeah. So, uh, I started in the space, uh, doing painting actually. Um, I was grandfathered in, uh, through a family, family member. They owned the business. They were just a boomer who was retiring, um, looked to pass on uh, the business to somebody, uh, and I was like, sure, <laughs> I'll do it. I uh, didn't want to be a painter. I've got a finance background, but decided to take a look at the numbers and just jump jump right in. Um, shortly after taking over the business, I realized that there's really no technology in the construction. Well, wait, wait, Carter, before trade. you tell us that story, uh, since you're a finance guy, what were you most concerned oh. about looking at the numbers at the start? Uh, accounts receivable. Okay, interesting. All right, now tell the rest of the story. We'll come back to accounts receivable in a second. <laughs> Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, no, really just um, uh, realized there's no technology in the space. And there were just so many cool startups that were happening. Um, Uber at the time was one that was really eye catching. And then uh, I went to Dubai um, to meet with a friend of mine who is like a startup incubator. Uh, and there's a great company out there called Urban Company. Um, and basically what I wanted to do is I wanted to take what these other companies were doing and just see if it was applicable to the Canadian market. Um, so we launched uh, on-demand home services. So you can hire anything from dog walkers to plumbing to painting, um, simple services right at the at the you know mobile touch of your fingers. So mm -hmm. that's what we've been doing. Uh, we're niching it in Vancouver. Um, the way that we're bringing it to market uh, is we're doing a lot of direct mail which is a little bit non-traditional for uh, SaaS. Well, Carter, and real quick, hold on, hold on one sec. The the website today focuses on painting, but you just said, I mean, are you are you more broad today than what your website says? Yeah, yeah, I know the painting is uh, the way that we launched it. So we launched it as a painting service offering more, um, but we're actually currently changing the text and just revisiting that landing page because more has become more popular i guess yes. uh, we just decided to focus in on one service um rather than telling everybody that we do everything yeah no, no i think that's great and there's text on the site i imagine it's old but it says you're doing 500 paintings per month per excuse me per month what's that updated today are you still doing about 500 a month uh yeah i would say about 500 a month but more so just spread out across the services channels so i wouldn't say that it's more it's 500 painting it's more just 500 um services that we're booking so and what is actually that? So what are the better. what are the big what are the top three today paint painting and what are the other two? Oh, house cleaning for sure interesting okay house cleaning, what's car the third detailing. one car car detailing yeah hmm. yeah everybody just wants to get into a nice clean car i mean you're in a condo building right so Oh, what's going on there, YouTube? Good to see you guys. Now imagine this. You love watching these interviews with SaaS founders, but imagine if we took all of the valuation data out from over 2,807 interviews I've done manually. Saves you a lot of time. Well, we've done this. We've built it into the beautiful interface inside of FounderPath. Check this out. I'll show you how you can access this in a second, but you log in, you connect your Stripe account, you see your valuation real time, you can see what it changed over the past 88 days, and even set goals for valuation valuation this year. Now, the secret valuation is there's many different ways to value a SaaS business. So the reason you're going to see three or four different valuations inside of your FounderPath dashboard, this is all free, by the way, is because depending on who's doing the buying of your SaaS company, you're going to get a different valuation. 
A VC is going to pay a different valuation. Private equity firm is different. If you're going to do a minority sale, that's different. And if you sell the whole business, that's a different valuation. You can see all those when I hover over here. Right, so the teal is what a VC would pay. Yellow is what private equity, and red is if you sold the whole thing outright. Now, what's cool about this is this is not built off random data. Again, you guys hear these interviews on YouTube. All these data are built from real time valuation data points found or share with us on the show. So traction, one point two million seed round, three point seven raise. They sold twenty two percent of their business. Go in here and filter by the event. Maybe you only want to see companies that have sold the whole business. Well, here are a bunch that have been acquired, the valuation and the multiple. Maybe you're going out right now and you're raising your seed round. Well, go in here and look at all this recent seed deals that went down, what they raised, what valuation they raised at, and what percent that they sold. There's never been a larger data set of SaaS valuations than what you can get now inside of FounderPath, and we're thrilled to bring it to you. All right, we're going to go back to the YouTube video here in a second, but if you want to check this tool out, if you want to jump in and sign up, you can check it out for free to get your valuation at this link, this link, founderpath.com forward slash products forward slash valuations, or if you go to founderpath.com and hover over products, click on get your valuation here and go ahead and sign up to give it a whirl. Again, all that valuation data live right inside the platform. I hope to see you there. All right, let's jump back into the interview. So I guess, look, it's a marketplace. You have two things you've got to figure out. How to get consumers to click, yes, I want house cleaning or car detailing or painting. And then you've got to go get, go round up people that can do car detailing and re reply instantly when someone pushes a button in your app. So let's start got with it. the supply. Let's start with the supply side first. Where do you go find 100 car detailers in Vancouver that are ready to respond to your consumers requests in the app? Facebook groups. Easy. Interesting. Um, Facebook groups, just contact. I mean, this is like some tricks of the trade that I had to use, but just contacting admins and getting their respect um, and just being integral and empathetic towards like the group, the group pro posting rules. Mm -hmm. um, and then just reaching out to people and letting them know what you're doing. Um, looking, letting them know that you're looking to network and just have these coffee conversations. Um, and then on the other side of things, like getting people to click, to click yes. Right. And, and book that service. Um, Alex Harmozy does a great piece on offering something for free or offering something way cheaper than what it's worth. Um, so that's how we got people to say yes, is we use direct mail, uh, to just basically send them a grand slam offer. So the Which grand slam offer, it was $97 for a full condo clean. It was under a hundred bucks to get your whole condo cleaned. Um, people were just like, oh, that seems like a no brainer. Uh, and it was right. I mean. For nine for under hundred bucks. Well, you're a finance right? guy though. How do you make the margins work? You gotta find cleaners in Vancouver willing to clean a whole condo for under 97 bucks and and still have room for your margin. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning though, you don't like in the beginning, really, we're just trying to break even. Like we're just really trying to get the trust because we want the app to be sticky. Mm -hmm. Right. We want people to trust the app and continue to use other services. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's really just like the uh implement or the the first click that we're trying to to get. And it's really not about making a margin so much on that first click. Um, but again, to like house cleaners, um, all these sorts of services, right? Like they offer, you know, low end uh, production. So Carter, how many uh, folks took you up on that, on that Grand Slam offer? Uh, well, in the, we just did this Grand Slam offer starting in January. Uh, and then we had 200 people in the first month. Wow. Okay. So, and then, and then were you able to break even on all those 200 cleans? around it yeah yeah i mean sometimes obviously you go above and beyond uh to just go the extra mile to satisfy the customer and that's something that we encourage people to do regardless like we're trying to build the brand here we're trying and did to build you hold service. was that ever i mean one of the key points of what alex talks about in his book 100 million dollar offers is you know if you get 97 bucks that's great gets them in the door but if you can drive up the average cart value because you upsell car detailing and other things that's great so i mean when you look at the 200 that took the grand slam offer did they all pay only 97 or did anyone upsell to other things so what we're currently working on right now is like how can we upsell through the application right and keeping these people as contractors so that's i think are one of our challenges at the moment is like we want people to increase their like their purchasing 
we want them to purchase more services through the application um but we just don't know exactly like what are the most demanded services because if mm -hmm. we put in the application we do this 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 and this and you can purchase this 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 um it's almost overwhelming uh, and people don't really know what they're getting so really just trying to simplify the product offerings and that's where we're trying to find like the next thing that we want to offer the next upsell that's a grand slam how well eventually but you can't keep doing grand slams where you break even like eventually yeah, you need yeah. to make a margin sure. right so um yeah. i guess do you empower the the contractor that you hire to go clean the condo what do you pay them about 97 bucks yeah Pretty close, okay, yeah. so you really make no money there. Do you empower the contractor to upsell the client on the spot? Like, can the person doing the cleaning upsell car detailing on the spot? They can, yeah. How do you get them to do they that? Can. And did did any of them do that for the first two hundred grand slam cleans? So some of them did, but where we are finding a bit of not not trouble, but we're trying to bring these people on as independent contractors. Mm -hmm. um so that they can continue to like work for themselves but also you know work under our branding um so that's something that we just go back and forth with a little bit and we're just trial and erroring uh, as we go um more or less though we're really just trying to um give people like we want to be also SaaS, which is a little tricky because we would love to eventually begin charging these contractors to be a part of our platform if that makes sense and that's where we're hoping to see the margins increase a little bit more. If that makes yeah, sense. no, it's definitely a playbook. I mean, we've got a lot of founders on that run marketplaces like Get Spiffy and these guys, mm -hmm. but it's really hard the first five years for the marketplace. And then they launch software that helps con paint contractors run their paint operation, right? And you already have mm -hmm. the upsell, like you can sell them directly because they're already in your marketplace, but it's really hard the first couple of years to get it going. It sounds like this was yeah. passed down to you from family. When did the company launch? What was the first year? Stay busy yeah stay busy's first launch was last year so did you spin that out of the family business that's been around much longer N not really uh the family business is more just like a commercial painting company um it's not technically it's not it doesn't have any technology behind it at all it I was see. really just seeing a need in the market and wanting to create an awesome product um that had a higher opportunity Right. I it's see. Like so V1 of Stay Busy was really right. to help the family business manage their own paint work. And then now it's like, well, now the, the your family businesses aren't the only painters. There's a hundred other painters on the platform now. Totally. Totally. It's more though too, like even out like going back to Harmozy too, like he just talks about how sometimes you have like a level eight skill, but doing a level four opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you have a level 10 skill and you're doing a level four opportunity, you know, your ceiling is so low. So we just wanted to be, or for me personally, I wanted to be in a space where I felt like I had a level 10 opportunity um, to the point of, I was just like, listen, like the painting company, yes, I can take it to seven, eight figures. Um, yeah. But if I have an application, that's really awesome. And it's really changing the way that the space is going. Um, that's like a nine figure opportunity right there. So I yeah. wanted to start something of a problem in an industry that just felt dinosaur. <laughs> so how many total jobs did you complete in uh, last year in 2022? Uh, we didn't actually complete that many because we felt like the year was a lot of testing. Mm -hmm. We're testing. What was the number? How low was it? Like like 10, 100, 500? No, we we're, we we're a little higher than that. Like I think we were totaling a thousand, okay. um, but it still felt like it was more lead generation. -y. Yeah. Like we had a totally different model last year where it was more along the lines of just like, okay, here's a job, you know, here's a pay us a percentage. We didn't like that, right? We felt like what the percentage percent? thing, it just what percent were we charging people? We were charging yeah, 10%. What were you saying? Okay. So on a ninety seven dollar so, clean, so, you would mark it up ten bucks. That's your ten percent markup. Yeah, but we were doing painting, right? So the jobs yep. were like a thousand, two thousand, five thousand, ten thousand. So that's mm -hmm. where we were making money last year. Um, but it just wasn't like reliable. Right. And what was the just, average? What was the so of the thousand you did last year? What was the average project price? The average project price was around twenty seven hundred. Wow. Okay, and that's cost painting, car detailing, every everything just averaged. No, no, no painting only. Are we all the, the thousand from last year painting? Year. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Okay, so that's what is that? Is that two point seven million? That's two point seven million in painting volume last year. 
Yeah. Okay. That's pretty, I mean, that's pretty healthy. Um, interesting. But so I guess, again, yeah, not reliable. It wasn't reliable. Right. Because like for us, like, <laughs> I mean, it was great to pump our, our tires and everything, but just, just to like bring things back to reality, the model I didn't like because I couldn't rely on it. And here's, here's the other thing too, is like, we're, we're getting these leads, like we're paying to acquire these leads right? Whether it's through LinkedIn, like using duck soup or whether it's Facebook using these Facebook groups, whatever it, word of mouth it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, like we're only making money on the leads that we provide. And if the contractor closes the deal. Mm -hmm. So that's where the struggle was, is we were like, Hey, well, you know, we can't do, we can't do a sales Academy as well. Yeah. Like, I mean, did you, did you make money on the 2.7 million last year of volume or no? Well, yeah, of course. Okay. But, but I mean, it's not still, terrible. What yeah. do you mean? I guess I don't understand what you mean when you say you can't rely on it. I mean, if you sell the painting first and then you come back and upsell the car detailing and the full house cleaning and the cleaning happens every month, now it's recurring. I guess, wh why do you feel like you can't rely on that stream? Well, it was just more so like we felt like we couldn't rely on it because it was costing us so much and we couldn't, like we weren't doing the selling, if that makes sense. Like mm -hmm. we were having the contractors do the selling on our behalf. Mm -hmm. So we were sending them over. We were like, listen, like, this is your job. Go give the estimate, go give the price. Right. Yep. And then if you close the deal, we receive that commission. So what's your goal this so year that's in terms why of projects done? Uh, in terms of projects done, we're probably looking at, I would love to do like 5,000, honestly. And just how many will be much. painting? I just want to verify the model. Mm, not as much, if I had to guess. Because we're focusing solely well, on Carter, not as much as in a number. What's your number? <laughs> How many of the five thousand you think will be painting? Uh, I would probably say five hundred. Interesting. Give or you take. really don't like painting, even though that per job price is it's much higher than ninety seven dollar cleaning job. But the reason I don't like painting, <laughs> I actually hate painting. I don't like brushing or rolling. Um, so many things go wrong in painting. It's not simple. Like like it's what? It's not a simple. Paint gets spilled. Client doesn't like the color. Um, if you have other trades in the project itself, right, it affects your margins because the efficiency timeline is stretched out. Um, there's just so many things at play, like material costs. Um, you just can't accurately you can't accurately guess the material costs, right? It's in between ten or fifteen percent, right? Um, depending on what materials you use, sometimes it's more expensive, less expensive. Um, it's just not, it's just, it's not a simple service. Yeah. So for me, yeah, project costs are higher, but it's just in terms of like output, it's just so much more work than Understood. it is to say, go clean the house. You know. Go yeah. get, go Sorry. Get your, go I don't, I don't mean to stuff. rush you, Carter. Just we're, we're about out of time here. It's a quick show real, real quick on the supply side. How many contractors do you think you'll pay at least a dollar this year to complete all, all the jobs? Oh, 1500. Okay, so one, so fifteen hundred to do five thousand jobs. So one contractor can do mult, you know, ideally stays on your platform can do multiple jobs. Yeah, that's right. Interesting. And well, hey, listen, one day you hopefully you know have ten thousand contractors and you can sell them a SaaS product and that becomes a nine figure exit for you. We'll see what happens. But <laughs> in the meantime, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite book? Oh, uh, the hard things about hard things uh, by Horowitz. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? Uh, Alex Hermosi. Number uh, three, what's your favorite online tool for building Stay Busy? Duck Soup, the Google extension. Yep. They're, they're actually, they just came on. They just broke 7 million bucks in revenue. They're growing quickly. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, eight. And what's your situation? Married, single kids? Single. Uh, that's okay. not true. In a relationship, but not married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good correction there. You don't want, you know, you, they hear this. That's not good for you. All right. Uh, last question. Oh, we're sorry. Second to last question. How old are you today? Uh, I'm 26. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Uh, that, well, that's a good question. Something that I knew, it doesn't get easier. Mm -hmm. It gets harder, but it doesn't get worth it.
Guys, his family's painting business did 2.7 million bucks in revenue, but he said, guys, I want to go after a nine-figure deal. Let's make this a marketplace for any home services, car detailing, painting, you name it, cleaning, they'll do it. He put together a $97 Grand Slam offer for folks in Vancouver to use his app to get nine, their whole condo clean for 97 bucks. 200 people took advantage of that in Q1 so far this year in 2023. He's hoping to do 5,000 jobs completed this year, and those jobs get completed by over 1,500 contractors who ideally start making a living on his app, staybusy.ca. Check it out. Carter, thanks for taking us the top. Awesome. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers. They try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash Slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right, I'll be in the comments. See ya.